in this video we will talk about two important concepts covariance and contravariance now both of these guys were introduced in dotnet 4.0 so in order to understand their importance and in, in order to understand you know why they even exist uh, probably it would be a good idea if you can just go back to 3.5 and see the problem and then we will try to define these two guys so what I'll do is first let me go and create a very simple console application using the 3.5 framework let's talk about the problem and then we will see that how covariance and contravariance actually helps us out so you can you can see over here in your screen I have selected a simple console application and I am uh, not using 4.0 but I'm using 3.5 and let me go and create a project here called as contra and covariance and in this console application what I'll do is let's go and create a class called as animal now this animal class is inherited by a class called as dog so we have a concrete class called as dog and we have a parent class called as animal right and let me again go and create some more varieties here must be a cat and a cat also belongs to animal so you can see that I have created a very simple uh, class hierarchy here animal is the is the top par parent hierarchy and it is inherited by dog as well as cat great now using this parent and child relationship which we have now let me go and write some code uh, you know for dynamic polymorphism now in case you're new to objective programming concepts what exactly is dynamic polymorphism in dynamic polymorphism you know you can you can take the parent object and point point towards the child objects in other words you can go and create an object of animal and on runtime you can point that animal object to dog or a cat and change the behavior dynamically okay so uh, what I'll do is I'll go and create an object of animal so I'll say obj animal and this object animal on runtime I can point towards dog this is a perfectly valid statement right or must be I can take the same obj animal and point towards cat you know this is also a perfectly valid statement all right great now just to make sure you know these are perfectly valid statements I'll just go and do a build and I can see it is succeeded so it is nice and also you know just to make sure that I don't get any runtime errors I can just run this and I can see that my code is executing perfectly well and it is nice so good so we have written perfectly valid code uh, and it is nothing but dynamic polymorphism now let me go and uh, write some more code okay and this time I'm going to raise my bar higher for dynamic polymorphism now using these valid statements as my base if I make one more statement so if you say that you know an animal can point towards a dog then can a group of animal point towards a group of dog so in other words if I do something like this if I say I enumerable of uh, animal can this I enumerable point towards a list of dogs right now you can see that you know you can see a red sign here saying that you know I cannot uh, you know convert this or you know you can see that there is an explicit conversion error here now that is strange right it is confusing I mean to say if an animal can point towards a dog if an animal can point towards a cat you know then why not a group of animal point towards a group of dog or a group of animal point towards a group of cats now this is confusing so this is where exactly covariance comes to help Covariance, you know, allows you to do things in your code, you know, that previously you were surprised you could not do. In other words, if I go and change now this to .NET 4.0, so let me go and change this framework here in my Visual Studio to .NET 4.0 here. And if I go and build this, it compiles perfectly well, right? So, so now the question is that how does it compile? So out of curiosity, if you just go to this I enumerable interface here, you can notice the first thing is this out keyword. 
and the second thing which is very noticeable here is this says that this type parameter is covariant right in other words the i enumerable interface is covariant enabled so putting things together the covariance helps you to maintain assignment compatibility during dynamic polymorphism in other words as a object new programmer things which were working logically with single object assignment will also work with interface collections like i enumerable which is covariant enabled and this covariant enabled is done by using the out keyword so in case you create your own interface and if you want to make it covariant enabled what you can do is that you can use this out keyword and do the same now this video we will divide into two parts the first part which we just saw now explains covariance and in the next part of the video we will try to understand what exactly is contravariance you know just in one line let me just tell you contravariance is exactly opposite of covariance so one actually you know tries to maintain the assignment compatibility while other goes vice versa so i hope that you enjoyed this video in the next part of the video we will try to understand what exactly is contravariance thank you very much